In today's video, we're going to prove that the number e, the number that we see in calculus and know about from logarithms, is actually an irrational number, meaning that it's not the quotient of two integers. All right, so we're going to use the power series expansion of e a lot in this video. And that expansion is 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, etc., which you can write in a compact form as a sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. Okay, so how is this proof going to proceed? Um, so one of the things we're going to do is first prove that e can't be a natural number or an integer. So if we look at the first two terms in the power series expansion, they sum to 2, so e is definitely greater than 2. Now let's write out the power series expansion again, and we're going to compare the terms one by one to powers of two to get an upper bound that's going to make sure that e can't be a natural number. So we have one, and then we have plus one, and then a half, which is one over two factorial. Then one over three factorial is one over six, and that's bounded above by one over four. And we can do the same thing with the next term. In the series, the next term is one over four factorial, and that's 1 over 24, which is less than an eighth. So we can keep comparing the reciprocals of factorials to powers of 2. And the reason we can do that is n factorial, when n is greater than 2, is lar larger than 2 to the n, or when n is uh, greater than 4. Um, so 1 over n factorial is going to be less than 1 over 2 to the n. All right, so we've compared this, the power series expansion to a sum that's a geometric series with first term 1 and raise show a half. So we get 1 plus 1 over a half, which is 3. And so e is actually sandwiched between 2 and 3. So we definitely have that e can't be an integer. So let's assume, as a contradiction, that e was some rational number. Then now we know that if we put the rational number in lowest terms, the denominator is going to be at least 2. All right. Reason being, if the uh, denominator was 1, then we'd have an integer. So to prove the rest of this, uh, what we're going to do is uh, consider a really interesting number. We're going to take e and peel off the first b plus 1 terms in the power series expansion. So when n goes to 0 to b, from 0 to b, and then we're going to multiply that quantity by b factorial. I'm going to call that x. We're going to prove three interesting facts about x, and I actually suggest pausing the video and trying to prove these things yourself. So first we're going to prove x is an integer, then we're going to prove that x is positive, and then finally we're going to prove x is actually less than 1. So we'd have an integer that's strictly between 0 and 1? That's not possible. Uh, so this is going to give us a contradiction altogether. So the first piece we're going to prove is that x has to be an integer, and that's going to involve manipulating the expression we have for x, substituting the fact that e is a over b. Uh, so if we do that, we get b factorial times the quantity uh, a over b minus this truncation of the power series expansion of b, the sum n equals 0 to b of 1 over n factorial. All right, uh, so b factorial itself is b times the quantity b minus 1 factorial. And we can multiply that by the a over b quantity. Uh, and then we can make the sum have b factorial in the numerator of each of the terms by multiplying the b factorial in. Okay, now in the first term, we have two b's, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, we can cancel out. And we're left with a times b minus 1 factorial, so that's an integer. Then we have this sum involving terms b factorial over n factorial, and all the denominators are factorials of numbers that are smaller than b. So we can write b as the product of the first n positive integers, then the rest up to b. And the first n cancel with the n factorial to give us an integer, the product of the numbers from n plus 1 up to b. Okay, so definitely x is an integer, it's the difference between two integers. So now let's prove x is positive. Now for this, we're going to use the power series expansion of b itself. So for e itself. So that power series expansion is the sum n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial. And then we're subtracting the truncated version, the first b plus 1 terms in that series. Um, so what we're left with is b factorial times the sum of all the latter terms, from n equals b plus 1 all the way to infinity of 1 over n factorial. 
Okay, all those terms we're adding up are positive, so the sum that we end up with is something that's actually positive. So we're good to go on positivity. And so the thing we're left to prove is why x is strictly less than 1, and that's the more involved part. And it's going to use what we did in, a re what we developed for the positivity, uh, this trunk, this version of the value of x where the series uh, goes from n equals b plus 1 to infinity. We'll absorb the b factorial into the sum, so we get the sum n equals b plus 1 to infinity of b factorial over n factorial. And now let's write out terms. The denominators are factorials of things that are larger than b, because we start at b plus 1. So we'll have a b factorial, and then the product of the rest of the terms, which is b plus 1, b plus 2, up to n. The b factorials then will cancel each other out, and in the bottom we're left with this product of a bunch of terms, all whose terms are greater than b plus 1, except for b plus 1 itself. So the product is going to be greater than b plus 1 to the exponent of the number of terms we have, which is the first term minus the last term plus 1. Okay, and that exponent will simplify to n minus b. So we have an upper bound for our sum of the sum n equals b to plus 1 to infinity of 1 over the quantity b plus 1 all raised to the n minus b. Great, and that's actually an inequality because the b plus 2, b plus 3 up to, b, up to n terms are all strictly greater than b plus 1. Okay, so in the denominator, our exponent starts at 1, so we can rewrite this sum as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over b plus 1 to the n, and that's an infinite geometric series with common ratio 1 over b plus 1. The first term is 1 over b plus 1, so the sum is going to be 1 over b plus 1 all over 1 minus 1 over b plus 1. The denominator here simplifies to b over b plus 1, and so this entire sum that serves as an upper bound for x is 1 over b. But because the denominator of e is a number that's at least 2, because we already proved e is not an integer, b is at least 2, and so 1 over b is actually less than or equal to a half, or strictly less than 1. And so we do get that x is less than 1. So altogether, x is an integer, greater than 0, and less than 1, which is completely impossible. So there's no way our assumption that e was rational could be true in the first place.